Hello guys, this is Spicy Bill and this is going to be a review on the Square Enix Play Arts Kai action figure from the Dark Knight Trilogy. This one's number 3, Catwoman. So another Catwoman on my channel. Obviously Catwoman is my favorite superhero or super villain. Depends on... Uh, whatever. Uh, well, because cats. I like cats. So anyway, this is figure is licensed by DC Comics. And uh, also licensed by Warner Brothers. So, and this figure is rated for ages 13 and up. I think this figure came out in 2013, around the time of the movie, or 2012, somewhere then. Uh, here we have some information about Catwoman. You can zoom in and if you want to read that. Uh, we also have the, this very nice spray paint. <coughs> Ooh, <coughs> getting dusty in here. That says Meow. That's actually pretty cute. <coughs> Here at back of the box, uh, number four is the Joker, and you can see from the promotional picture, her outfit doesn't look like it's textured. But you know, when you actually get the figure, the outfit is very nicely textured and shaded too, so that's actually very nice. Uh, number three, Catwoman. Number four, Joker. This figure has 26 points of articulation. Uh, it's recommended for ages 15 and up in Japan. In US, it's recommended for ages uh, 13 and up. Janko UPC uh, also developed sculpted by the DICE project, a subsidiary of Square Enix. And uh, the figure retails around, I think, 80 bucks. Yeah, you can still get this figure for around 80 bucks. It's still, uh, the price really hasn't inflated much. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the box right here. Uh, obviously, the Play Arts Kai stand, and then also how to uh, interchange the accessories uh, on the figure. Here shows you how to build the stand, and yeah, I mean, if you want to build a stand, I never, I'm really not a big fan of these stands, so I'm not going to do anything with it. So there we go, and for accessories, uh, we got two of these uh, open claw hands, kind of, there's really no sharp tips on these hands, so you can see that. And we also have uh, another open hand. Well, this one's uh, this one really doesn't really serve any purpose because she has a trigger finger for the gun, and we also have an uh, alternate head scope with the uh, uh, her night vision goggles down. That's actually pretty nice. Everything is nicely sculpted, nicely painted. We also have uh, interchangeable parts for the hair. You can see uh, the hair. Uh, this design is actually really smart. So you just put the hair in, and it's right where the goggle meets. <clears throat> so yeah, and you can you can interchange the hair on the figure on both head scopes. So that's actually a very nice design. Let me show you that real quick. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at the other accessory. We have the uh, uh, pistol right here, and then we also have the trigger finger. So there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and take the pistol off. Um, yeah, it's really nothing to write home about. It looks okay. They could have done a lot better with the pistol. This thing just looks, compared to uh, you know the other accessories, I give they give other lines of figures. I think uh, this pistol is actually kind of weak. Okay, so let's go ahead and swap out the hand right here. Again, it's like those uh, ball joint and peg system, and the ball joint is uh, very well exposed, so it looks kind of ugly. In my opinion, uh, some people like it, some people don't. I wish the uh, ball joints is like a little bit well more uh, hidden inside the uh, forearm. But oh well. So here we go. We have the uh, open claw hand thing right here. So you gotta kind of work it in the first time around. I haven't, uh, you know, I haven't installed these hands yet. So I'm just breaking them in as I'm filming it. Right there. That's the open hand. And let's go ahead and remove the open hand. And then let's go back to the uh, normal hand that's come with the figure. There we go. And let's go ahead and interchange the head scope. So basically, you just, well, this is the easiest way to do it. You take off the top of the face. And then, uh, there we go. Let's just pop this thing in there like that. That looks pretty cool with the windswept hair. Uh, the hair is kind of rubbery, so although you're really not gonna be, uh, you know, 
you're not gonna be like able to uh, manipulate the hair it's just rubbery just so you know they didn't want to make it out of hard plastic so these tips won't break off I think that's very nice it's also very nicely shaded I think it's molded in this clear uh, plastic and then they just uh, shade it in with the uh, paint and that looks really nice uh, you can see the texturing around the uh, the whole body this is very nicely done let's go ahead and take a look at that very nicely shaded and also the texturing on the uh, the suit looks really good I think the only thing that was left over from the original design are these uh, forearms see these are not textured yeah but I think she's actually wearing gloves in the movie I think but I don't know um, I did review the uh, Medicom Mafix version of this figure and I really like the Medicom Mafix. I think uh, the Square Enix version is a little bit better. It's just the sculpt work here is a lot better. The proportion looks nicer. Um, I'm still hoping to get uh, the Hot Toy version someday. Hopefully soon. <laughs> so yeah, this is, this is very nice. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, swap out the uh, headpiece. Again, like I said, this thing is made from a softer rubbery plastic, so it's very easy to take apart. Let's go ahead and pop this piece in there like that. So you have the option to display with this piece right here, or you can go with the, the alternate. Well, this is actually the main face, and you can see it's painted very nicely. Eyes, everything very nicely done <clears throat> there we go like that I think I prefer it with the uh, I think I prefer with this head scope I just look a lot better yeah okay let's go over some articulation real quick on this figure so obviously uh, we have the uh, we this time we have a toe pivot right here that really helps us stabilize the figure if you don't want to use the stand because she's wearing heels. So it's a little bit tricky to get her to stand. You, you have to really like, you know, balance her for her to stand. Otherwise, uh, she kind she can fall over very easily. Okay, so we have the uh, double joint the knee, which is very nice. Uh, they do look really weird on human characters, you know, whenever you get them, uh, get the knee to bend like that. So that might be a little... Uh, issue with some people. We also have a hinge right here. It's a ratchety hinge right here, ball joint, ball uh, peg hinge kind of thing. You can rotate that. There's a rotation at the peg and the rotation up there. So, you know, very typical. All right. So, we have universal joints for the hips. Uh, couldn't, can't really do the splits because of the uh, uh, this rubbery uh, waist piece right here legs and kick forward like that and yeah move back it's a little stiff so this one is not stiff so there we go like that and I do have some issues with you know uh, I sing it on the halo figure as well like this piece like to collide with this uh, inner piece right here which is kind of annoying so that's my one issue I have with it. We also have the uh, waist rotation, I believe. Uh, really not much. You can move the uh, uh, waist up, I guess, like that. It looks kind of weird. Move it forward a little bit. Uh, really not that much. And then we have the diaphragm joint, which is super nice. This is very nicely executed. We also have the uh, butterfly joint right here for the shoulders, both of them. Uh, really doesn't do much to be honest with you uh, you're going coming from this much right here to right here like that is not a lot okay we have a hinge right here for the shoulder so the arm can go perpendicular we have the bicep swivel and we have the uh, elbow bend right there it's just a ball joint ratchet hinge oh not ratchet this is just a ball yeah it's really not much single bend no double joint the elbows a little bit more than 90 degree but don't expect too much we also have the hinge right here oh this thing is ratcheted so like i said i'm not really a big fan of uh the look of these especially uh, when they're super exposed obviously there's a peg in the hand right there and the peg that goes into the forearm 
Uh, head is a double ball joint, uh, one ball joint in the neck and then one ball joint for this thing. I guess you can call it the dumbbell joint. So you can rotate that. Uh, the hair does get in the way, sort of. Yeah. And there's also another issue right here. When you turn the head, you can see uh, there's a gap right there. You can push it down a little bit more to try to hide it. But yeah, you, you can see there's a gap right there with a pick. So uh, some people call it the lollipop syndrome. <laughs> Although, you know, with the hair, it kind of, kind of hide it. But yeah, if you turn the head, you can see the, uh, uh, the lollipop. Well, whatever. <laughs> but overall, this is a very nicely sculpted figure. I really like this figure. Uh, I'd like to thank my friend Henry for sponsoring this figure. This is actually part of this collection that I'm helping him sell on eBay. So yeah, if you guys like, uh, you know, Catwoman, this figure uh, is available now. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this figure. I think uh, Square, you know, I think some of the older uh, Square NX uh, Play Arts Kai figures are still pretty good. But, yeah, uh, the lines definitely uh, have seen better days. In 2019, I don't know if this line is still alive or not. Maybe it's just in limbo. They haven't really decided they want to kill it yet or they want to keep going. You know, they, they do have another line, the uh, Bring Arts. So I think they're working on that. But anyway, this is pretty much it for uh, the review for the Play Arts Kai Catwoman from the Dark Knight Trilogy. Thanks for watching.